All right, so last time we were working with integers, um, so we were just talking about adding and subtracting. So remember when we are adding integers, if they are the same sign, you're going to add, you're going to find the sum. So same sign, you find the sum and take the sign. Okay. If they're different signs, you're going to find the difference or subtract. Um, and then take the sign of the larger value, the larger absolute value. Okay, those are pretty easy. When we got to subtraction, it took a little bit more thought. A lot of it you had to rewrite. So you wanted to keep, change, change. So keep the first one, negative three, change it to an addition problem, plus, and then change the sign of the second number. Okay, then once you have it as an addition problem, you go back and you follow the addition rules. Okay, so that's what we worked with yesterday. Today we're going to work with multiplying and dividing. Multiplying and dividing, so much easier. Not as many rules um, and a little bit uh, easier to understand. So I want you to get your notes page out from yesterday. Turn it over on the back and I'm going to make sure and look for these. So go ahead and pause the video and get that notes page out. All right, so this is not a long video, so just bear with me here. So I want you to title the back of it, multiplying and dividing integers, multiplying and dividing integers, okay? All right, so here are the easy rules. If you have the same sign, your answer will always be positive, either if we're dealing with multiplying or dividing, okay? Same sign, your answer will always be positive. So for example, if I have a five times seven, obviously that's gonna be positive 35. But if you have a negative six times a negative three, you're gonna multiply the numbers, that gets 18, but your answer will always be positive. Okay, so two negatives, when you multiply two negatives, it gives me a positive. Okay, same thing for division. Okay, same sign, so, 35 divided by 5 would be 7, obviously. But if we have negative numbers, let's say negative um, 12 divided by negative 3, 12 divided by 3 is 4, but the answer will always be positive. Okay? Same sign, you're going to have a positive answer. Okay? If you have different signs, your answer is always going to be negative. Your answer will always be negative. Okay, so let's say um, um, negative four. Let's do plus. Let's do plus first. Four times a negative six. Let's do four times a negative six. Four times six is twenty-four. You have a positive and a negative, so your answer is going to be negative. Same thing. Um, negative three times a positive seven. Three times seven is 21, but you have a negative and a positive, so your answer is gonna be negative. Okay. Same thing with division. Um, let's go uh, 24 divided by negative eight. That would give me three. And there's a positive divided by a negative, so you would have a negative answer. If you have one of each, you're going to have that negative answer. Okay. Um, negative 60 divided by 6. 60 divided by 6 is 10. And you keep your negative. That's it. That's all it is. That's all it is. Okay. So on the back, I want you to write number one, same sign. Your answer is always positive. If you want to write any of the examples, go for it. Or if you want to write the symbols, feel free to do that. And then number two, um, if the signs are different, your answer will be negative. Okay, so write those two things down. If you want to write the examples, go for it. Okay, I'm just going to do a couple of examples with you, ones that are um, a little bit harder. Um, so let's just look at a couple of these. Um, I'm going to go down to maybe this one. 12 times 6 is 72. There is There are different signs, so it's a negative. Okay. If you have more than one, 
here I have three numbers. You go them two numbers at a time. So a negative times a negative is a positive. So that's positive 15. And I'm going to then multiply it by this one times a negative 1. That would give me a negative 15. And then bring down your last number times a positive 3. So negative 15 times a positive 3 would give me a negative 45. Okay. If it looks like this, that's simply a division problem. If you want to rewrite it so that it looks like a division problem, that's fine. So 63 divided by 9 is 7. You have one of each, so it's a negative 7. If it looks like this squared number, that just simply means 3 fourths times 3 fourths. Okay, so a negative times a negative is a positive, so that would be 9 sixteenths positive. Okay? Any other questions with that? Let me know and make sure you have your notes written down and keep that sheet. I will be looking for it. All right, have a great day. Finish up your class kick.